Hi friends, I hope you're having a lovely day today. I am streaming live here with my friend, Michael Duke. Say hello, Michael. Hello, hello. Um, Michael is a fantastic photographer and I've had him on here before. And we're going to have um, some talks today about a photo essay that he has been working on. Well, no, they, have you finished it yet? I think it's finished. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there, there's definitely, I think some closure now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a photo essay about his 93. Is she still 93 or is she 94 she'll years be, old? Yeah, she'll be 94 in December, so okay. she's almost there. Yep. Okay, um, so 93-year-old, is it working? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just had to ask my wife if everything was working okay. Uh, live streams can be dangerous. The little square in the corners aren't there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so uh, his 93-year-old grandmother had knee surgery and he decided he would follow her very closely for that process. We're going to talk about that, but uh, very quickly, uh, two things. First thing, I cut my hair. You may have noticed this is the first video going out on this channel regarding my haircut. Michael says it looks nice. Um, but uh, I decided that I would chop all of my hair off, and I'm going to mention this a little bit more in my next video that will be coming out as well, that I just wanted to address that. You're probably like, what's going on? Second, uh, Michael is actually living in Houston. He lives very close to downtown Houston. As you know, the um, Hurricane Harvey just swept through there with fury and kind of stayed there, planted itself there for a little while. And uh, that was very devastating. Luckily, he's in good shape. He's alive. Um, but just very quickly, Michael, Give me uh, just a little update about how you're doing. Yeah, it's been a challenging two weeks, of course. Um, I mean, we got 50 inches of rain, uh, which nobody can be prepared for that sort of situation. So uh, we've had a lot of long days and a lot of long nights. Um, but, you know, this is a really cool city because people totally work together here. You know, it's funny. A couple of weeks ago, we were kind of at each other's throats and looking at everybody with suspicion over this whole Confederate statue, uh, Michigas, in this country. And now those same neighbors are the ones who are like mucking at each other's houses and everybody's kind of come back together. So I guess we just need like a good crisis to bring everybody together. And yeah, that's, uh, that's, I think that's um, a huge story that, that something like this has to tell. And it's, you think of back, uh, back in, you know, when 9-11 happened, how that everybody in New York City and in America just had this weird connection to each other. We're like, we're all humans. And, you know, let's be, we're going to figure it out. And not, you know, but. Um, yeah, I'm, I think the, the hurricane washed away a lot of ego and a lot of, you know, um, I guess differences. So ah, that's well been a said. blessing. Yep. Well said. Uh, so. Before, uh, wait, I was thinking if there's anything else I was going to say before that. I'm glad you're doing well. That's <laughs> fantastic. Um, I texted him very quickly after everything started kicking up and make sure he was okay. I, I didn't know exactly how close you were to what was going on. And but you're, you said you're right outside downtown, right? Yes. I mean, anywhere pretty much you would be in the city, you would have seen some flooding. We certainly had some in our neighborhood, like my garage flooded, and we actually lost my vehicle trying to rescue some neighbors. Um, the neighbors were okay, we were okay, but the car was not. Um, that sucks, so. man. That yep, sucks. We're, we're alive. That's like the most important thing, so no I, complaints. I've heard, uh, I think, was it, I guess it was you, I think it was you that texted me the other day and you said you've heard a lot of, no, 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 maybe it was somebody else I was watching. I forget who I heard this from. You hear, you hear a lot of, it's just a thing. That was, I was watching Casey Nice that said it's just, you know, you, you hear a lot of, uh, oh, it's just the thing that if your house gets flooded or if you're, you know, everything in your house breaks, your furniture's ruined, you know, you have your life. It's just a thing. Yep. And, uh, that's a. We say it's just stuff, you know, just people, stuff. people can't be replaced, stuff can be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so before, we, oh, we're going to talk about that in another live stream for everyone who's watching, by the way, we're going to go <clears> very <throat> deep into that because, um, like I said, uh, Michael is a passionate photojournalist and he has plenty of photos coming out of this. He's been working very hard to capture um, photos around this, but for today, I was going to wait until he was able to kind of consolidate and curate some of that for today we're just going to talk about this um this uh 
photo essay, which has been very fascinating to me around his grandmother. And I was curious, what, what was the catalyst for deciding to do this? This was obviously something that would take uh, a sacrifice of time and a lot of work. So my grandmother is basically the matriarch of the family. I mean, she is the hub to the wheel. And I've been long, longing to do some kind of project about her life. Again, she's almost 94 years old. I actually work with her. Um, and so when she fell earlier this year and broke her patella uh, in her kitchen, um, it kind of presented an opportunity, not only for the family to kind of rally around her to try to help her through this process, but um, you know, I've learned to always have my camera with me. So we went to go visit her in the ER on the day that she fell and she was a good enough sport to let me take photos. And once we basically got the x-rays back from the doctor, we knew that it was going to be several weeks or months of recovery. And so I talked to her then that night actually about kind of documenting the whole process and she was, she was cool with it. And that's important because we're obviously, it's a, it's a partnership to be able to follow somebody for weeks and months like that and to be very invasive um, and almost be ever present there with the camera. So she was okay with it. Uh, and that's what made the project happen. That was my question. What was her, you know, when you came to her with this idea, what was your, what was her reaction? <laughs> so my grandfather was a photographer. And so I guess she was somewhat used to somebody always having a camera around, but uh, her reaction was, well, you're my grandson, so I can't say no. So I guess I kind of exploited that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It, it, how much time were you spending with her throughout, uh, throughout, throughout the days and, and specifically when it first started and as it went on, how much time were you spending with it? So a friend of mine, um, who has an elderly parent uh, kind of pulled me aside after I was telling her that my grandmother had fallen. And she basically said, uh, you know, people around that age can go into rehab facilities and oftentimes they don't come back out because it's, it's not necessarily the injury that gets them, but it's the depression and the isolation. And so after hearing that, I basically made a series of phone calls to family members and we kind of came up with a game plan where we would never leave my grandmother alone for any kind of long stretch. So okay. there were some days during the week where I would be there, you know, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then somebody would come in and do a night shift. Um, I got to see her, I would say, probably five to six days a week, at least for a few minutes, if not for a few hours. Um, again, we have a very close family and a lot of us live here in Houston. So we kind of shared, shared the schedule and, uh, we, and we made it work, uh, you know, coupled with the fact that my grandmother is like a total warrior and got out of that rehab hospital, uh, and like record setting, you know, time and fashion. Mm. I'm sure, um, I'm sure having you guys around probably, probably helped. I hope so. The other, I would say, motivating factor on her end was the fact that my cousin was getting married in New Orleans like two months after she fell. And her goal uh, was to be at that wedding in person. So she really pushed herself hard to be there. So, you know, it's, it's funny as you say that. I don't know if you can, you're able to see what I'm sharing, but I just, I, I literally just went past a photo of her at a wedding as you said that. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I was going to ask you, I was going to circle, we'll have to circle back to that in just a second. Okay. Um, but uh, so I'm, I'm curious, what, what was the, this will be a bit of a two-parter question. I'll give you the first part first. What was the intended story that you thought you were going to be able to tell? Or did you have any sort of version of that in your mind? Yeah, going into it, uh, I certainly wanted to focus on her strength and her fortitude. She always was convinced that she was going to make it through this in record time, and she really proved that uh, to be, you know, the case. So that was the initial storyline going in. Um, but once we got into the project, it really kind of became not necessarily about like the overall struggle, but kind of a, kind of the day to day struggle, uh, because there were a lot of ups and a lot of downs throughout a day, depending on you know what she was being asked to do with rehab, 
nurses or going to doctor's appointments to get the staples removed. Now, there were certainly some setbacks where she thought she was going to be getting out sooner and she, you know, had to stay a little longer than she initially wanted to. So she got pretty down about that. So mm -hmm. I'm curious, uh, what was, was what you came out of it? Like what surprised you about what the story you were able, uh, able to tell or the experience you had? Uh, I mean, first of all, that the fact that she let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if I was necessarily surprised, but I was very impressed um, by that. Um, the other thing I think that was perhaps special about this project was the fact that I shot it in black and white film, as you can see. I did not shoot this with a digital camera, um, and that was intentional. Uh, it requires a lot more labor and concentration to be able to do a film project these days. Um, I've taught, my film how to, uh, taught myself how to shoot film over the last year or so. Um, and so I kind of made that choice perhaps out of solidarity with her situation. Mm -hmm. It was going to require a lot of her effort. It was going to require a lot of my effort and, uh, you know, we could lift each other up when we needed it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was the camera that you shot with? I saw it in a, in a, a yeah, let me grab it here. So just coincidentally, I was shopping for an, a medium format camera, my first medium format camera, around the same time that she fell. And we have a great little used camera shop in Houston. And I found a, a very user condition um, Hasselblad 500CM. Um, mm. You know, and I love the chrome lens. This is actually a funky 60 millimeter, which is about a 35 millimeter equivalent on, um, you know, full frame. Mm. Um, I think they only made this version uh, for about two years, though. Um, it's the F4. Gotcha. And uh, I shot almost exclusively Tri-X. I pushed it all to 1600 and did all the developing myself in the kitchen. Um, but it was, it was fun. I never shot medium format. I never shot square format. So there was a learning curve certainly um, at the beginning, but it was a fun challenge and I really enjoyed it. I, I think it, it really did that, that black and white grittiness really added to the aesthetic. And I also think that it probably was a very good choice given that, that in any sort of medical situation, a lot of times you have this very warm, dim ugh, light and there's a lot going on that's not really you, you'd like to maybe detract from a little bit in the scene. And I think black and white was a fantastic choice. Oh, uh, thanks. Certainly, you know, I wanted to kind of boil it down to the elemental level uh, and didn't want the distraction of color. The other practical reason was that, you know, you're in these rehab facilities and they have this horrible, like, um, fluorescent lighting, which, you know, wreaks havoc on people who don't understand white balance, myself being among that group. So uh, black and white <laughs> help me <laughs> avoid, you know, white balance issues. So <clears throat> it, it makes you understand uh, why, why they go depressed in there. I mean, it's, it looks like a nightmare in yeah. some parts. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what, what were some of the, what were some of the challenging bits for you? For me as a photographer or for the family? The, the experience between you, the, the interpersonal experience between you and your grandmother, uh, were there any challenging parts to shoot or to, to experience with her? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the first few days were challenging. You know, in a way, the fact that I was doing photography um, throughout her journey was helpful to me because it actually gave me kind of a physical, I don't know, shield yeah. from, you know, seeing my grandmother in such a vulnerable position. I was able to, it, it kind of allowed me to have some kind of separation from that mm -hmm. and not have to deal with it directly. It, but it almost same, put a, it put a, put a wall between you. Like you, yeah. like if you were watching it on a movie, you know what I mean? Like it put, it put this wall between you of being able to, to engage with it in a completely different way. Exactly, and then I didn't have to necessarily process the hard emotion of it initially because um, I was more caught up in the moment of trying to document it. Uh, the flip side of that was that I still saw her in very vulnerable situations. Um, you know, the first few days after her knee surgery and she was transferred to this rehab facility, she was in pretty bad shape. You know, she couldn't walk. She was very disoriented. Um, 
besides having this knee problem, she was suffering what I think the medical term is vasovagal episodes mm -hmm. where she was having these like sudden blood pressure drops and she would pass out. Mm -hmm. And that happened several times when I was there at the beginning and those were terrifying um, because those do kill people if they fall and hit their head. Yeah. Um, and then not really being able to physically help her because we were giving very clear instructions that that had to be done by all the nursing staff and not us um, because we don't know what we're doing <laughs> as <laughs> un, untrained professionals and we didn't want to hurt her more. So having to wait several minutes sometimes for a porter or a nurse to show up just to get her to go to the bathroom and to see how much stress that was causing her, even though she's 93 years old, she lives independently in a big house um, by herself now that my grandfather died in 2011. She seems and, pretty, pretty driven. Yeah, but, you know, she became a dependent for the first time, you know, pretty much in her life. And so seeing her in that position then really not being able to help her directly also made it really challenging for us. So Sure. Oh, yeah. Um, did you, did you ever find yourself having to sort of, like, how often did you have to sort of shift between photographer and grandson? Uh, I would say about every 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, number one, I had to conserve film, of course. Um, but obviously more importantly, there were moments where she needed a grandson and not a photographer there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so you know, I was constantly having to kind of switch, switch gears and change hats. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can imagine the, the time that you guys spent together uh, was, I'm sure it's something that she really appreciated. And I know that's something that you appreciated. Did you guys, did you, I mean, have you guys always been kind of close or did you guys grow closer to this? What was the effect through this? we yeah, we've always been close. I've been in Texas pretty much my whole life, and I work with my grandmother now. I work for a family business where it's three generations, so we we already had a very close relationship, which, again, I think is why perhaps she trusted me with this project um, to begin with, but um, there were definitely moments that we were closer. You know, prior to this, I had never had to help my grandmother go to the bathroom before. Um, and eventually when she had some more strength, we were able to do that. You know, I never had to feed my grandmother before. Um, and I learned to do that through this process. So in many ways, it definitely brought us closer together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I wanted to uh, just, I wanted to look at a couple of photos and kind of talk about them really quick. Yep. And I know that uh, you may have some trouble seeing this. I don't know if you are able to click over to my screen. And if not, yeah, that's I can see. fine. Um, let's see here. Presenting. Christina, <laughs> wife, can you check and make sure that I'm presenting my screen to the patrons? Yes, boss. And uh, the, the um, what are they called? Ah. Uh, the peasants. There we go. Okay, we're looking good so far. So good. Okay, I wanted to talk so you can see clearly, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, so this was one that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> this was one of the more silly ones. Hold on, let me see what's going on here. Oh no. Uh, okay. Well, you know, we're just gonna leave that there. <laughs> that's. I think that's the best thing I can do with that. Um, what was the story behind this photo? So this was, there were, there were multiple turning points kind of in the story. And um, this was the first time she had physical therapy slash occupational therapy where we saw her personality kind of coming back um, after surgery. This I think was like, you know, at the end of the first week, uh, she was clearly uh, done with me taking pictures at that moment. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> she signaled to me that she was done with that. And so I got the tongue out. Uh, Cause we had talked about how important it was for me to have more candid type shots rather than like posed ones. Mm -hmm. And so she thought she would ruin my photo by, you know. <laughs> certainly candid. <laughs> yeah, but it's mm -hmm. certainly one of my favorites because again, it was a moment where I got to see my grandmother kind of herself again. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I, it's a it's a beautifully composed shot and also a very um a very emotional shot i think i can imagine being in your shoes and and uh just seeing her be happy it was probably a very meaningful thing and it's cool that you shared that 
Yeah, thanks. That's that's one of the ones that I printed to hang on my wall eventually when I get around to hanging things on my wall. We just bought a house a little while ago. so. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you got to print that one. She would love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, has she seen that one? She has. Actually, I put the photos in a book. Um, and I showed her a few weeks ago when I got it back. And uh, while we were busy at work trying to get done with deadlines, she definitely took a few minutes to look at it. And she had a good laugh when she saw that, that particular image. That's good. That's awesome. What was your choice to, to put yourself in the shot with, for this one? So maybe this kind of goes back to your earlier question about what were the storylines. You know, going into it, it was really about her strength. but. Toward the end of the project, I think it was kind of also about our relationship um, that had developed throughout this journey. And so uh, on the last day of her full, our last full day of rehab, um, I followed her into the bathroom um, <laughs> when she was brushing her teeth to get ready to go home. And, uh, you know, I decided to go ahead and try to do a selfie. Um, to kind of, I don't know, maybe perhaps illustrate the relationship as it had developed and the trust factor that, you know, she and I had. Again, this is not a flattering photo on her end, um, but she still let me do it. And again, I think that says a lot about who she is. So, Well, I, I hope you take note of the fact that I was drawn to that photo in particular. <laughs> I, I, there's something about it that I really love. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> um, let's talk about this one. Uh, when did this happen and what was the story about it? So this was uh, the first full day of her being in rehab. She got there like on a Friday night. So I don't really count that as day one. I count that following Saturday morning. Um, Valentine's Day was a few week, a few days away. And my cousin, Wendy, who is the oldest uh, of the cousins, brought my grandmother a, uh, you can't tell that it's red, but the little monkey is red. Uh, it was like a Valentine's thing that she probably just got out of a drugstore or whatever. But my grandmother... <laughs> had taken her first few steps to be able to go to the bathroom, uh, like under her own weight uh, with a walker. And she was completely physically uh, wiped out right after doing that. And so this was her in bed right after taking those first steps and then kind of getting some comfort, you know, with the child's toy. And again, it was a situation where, you know, as you get older, you kind of revert to, uh, being helpless like a child, yeah. and so she, you know, kind of grabbed comfort from a child's toy here. Yeah. Uh, and, and so this, I just, this was something she, I mean, she did it on her own. Yeah, she. I don't. I don't think she was even aware that people were in the room at that moment, and certainly that I was clicking away with the camera. Mm. Um, she was just really, you know, totally wiped out. So. I don't know. She might have been like, Michael's going to think this is a freaking great shot. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, she uh, she named the monkey Valentino because, you know, it was Valentine's Day. Oh, so. well, that's fantastic. <clears throat> yeah. Valentino. Mm -hmm. I'm going to name my first child that. <laughs> um, okay, tell me about this one. This was at the, th was this at the wedding that you were referring to? Yeah, this was at the wedding, um, and the woman who's actually playing the double bass there is uh, one of the younger cousins. Um, so this is the groom's younger sister, and my grandmother just loves the fact that we have a musician in the family. Music is really important to her. She and my grandfather used to always go to symphony and opera and everything like that. So you can see my grandmother kind of in the front row there, kind of enjoying Caroline playing her double bass. Uh, she's at the Eastman College and the conservatory there in upstate New York. Um, and, you know, people were just kind of waiting around, uh, taking their seats. And of course she was given a seat there in the front row, which was pretty great. And I just, I love the smile on her face though, even though she's kind of, you know, back off in the distance there. Mm. Uh, yeah. I have to say this is, this is a fantastic photo. <laughs> Thanks. And, um, uh, compositionally, I love the fact that she's kind of the brightest, one of the brighter points in the photo. Like she's, uh, she's separated well, but also like you, that gave me like as you were talking about it, I had a little response there that worked me up a little bit. I mean, that's a, this is a really oh, beautiful nice. photo. Thanks. It, it's a photo that almost didn't happen too because uh, <laughs> my cousin Benjamin, who got married, um, they live in Germany and. He's a kind of a last minute type of guy. Um, and apparently they didn't have a photographer. So my sister called me on like 
Thursday or Friday saying, uh, we're going to this wedding, but they don't have a photographer. Can you take photos for them at the wedding? And <laughs> I said, um, I guess so. And so I took an overnight bus, actually, um, because I was shooting an assignment at the Museum of Fine Arts the night before and didn't feel like I was safe for me to drive. So I took an overnight mega bus to New Orleans, <laughs> <laughs> which was an experience in itself. Um, <laughs> And then was like the official wedding photographer. And I only shot one roll of film because uh, I just couldn't manage all the camera work because um, I needed to be shooting digital for the family itself. Yeah. So um, anyway, this was a, a lucky shot. <clears throat> so good. That's that's one of the best photos I've ever seen from you. <laughs> oh, was, that's so kind. Cool. Thank you. <clears throat> um, okay, I wanted to talk about, yeah, what was the, what, what was happening here? Uh, so this, so she had a series of uh, follow-up appointments with her orthopedic surgeon. Um, the first one, she got an X-ray. She didn't get an X-ray, but they removed the staples from the incision. Uh, and then the following uh, appointment, then she had a uh, an X-ray, and the nurse very kindly allowed me to be in the X-ray room. And I was standing in the nurse's station behind the glass and just put the camera basically up to the glass and uh, made a few exposures of the actual x-ray happening. You there? Hello, hello? Did I lose you? <clears throat> James? Hello? Mr. James. Hello? You're recovering. Oh, are oh. you there? I hear you now. Hey! Back. Oh, yay, I'm glad you're back. I, I was worried that... um. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Oh, okay, you're probably seeing the... Can you see my screen? I see the red photo pulsating, uh, your lo your logo. You see, okay, I see. Let's see here. I'm going to pull out of this uh, okay. screen sharing really quick. Was this my fault or yours this time? I think you dropped out. I was worried that it was going to be mine. Um, I was worried that... I can go back downstairs to closer to my router. You think uh, that could fine. help, potentially? No, I think you're fine. It's, sometimes they just do that. They just okay. you know, just drops off. I was worried it was mine because we've had some Wi-Fi issues lately. Hmm. Um, I don't know why you can't see me, though. But you can see me? Okay, so we have... Yeah, this is the internet right here. Uh, oh, the internet. Oh, the interwebs. We need to go back to carrier pigeons. <laughs> Funny you say that. My, you? my crazy aunt actually raises, ra raises carrier pigeons. <laughs> wow. <gasps> like, you know, that... how, like, <laughs> you know how people like do the, like, the dove releases at weddings and funerals and stuff? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's what she does in her free time is gotcha. train those those guys man I, I didn't know that was still a lucrative business i don't know if it's lucrative but it's still a business <laughs> <laughs> i think amazon should utilize carrier pigeons i know for uh, their whole foods deliveries mm -hmm. okay you know what i'm having trouble with screen sharing uh i'm gonna let me see if it'll we, we can do it blind Just yeah, tell me, can, uh... yeah i can see you um, okay and they can see you they're just looking at probably <clears throat> my talking um so they can't see your screen. They though, can't see my screen or mm. my face. Should I call you back? Can you do it in like two now parts or is that weird? Now we're good. I think we can just whip through the end of this. I'm gonna see if this will I'm just doing I'm just doing some settings here. Everybody hang in okay. there. Let's let's sing a song. Sing a song that's is a good photographer. Not at all. <laughs> Yeah, I gave some permission that I didn't give before. Mm -hmm. oh, that's weird. It's not okay. All right. You know what? That's fine. That's fine. So we got to talk about a couple of photos. There was one more that I really wanted to show that we didn't get to. I'm sure I can refer to it. I got the book here. So <clears throat> Oh, very good, very good. I wanted to talk specifically about the photo of when she was leaving and she had the two thumbs up. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
that that was that was, seemed like a really special photo. Yeah, thanks. I, I, you know, I think that's kind of the climax of the story. Um, that's you know, it was a real candid moment that that is actually when she was pushing out of the rehab facility uh, for the last time as you know a patient there. And she was very exuberant. Uh, she collected a series of balloons while she was there, including some from Valentine's Day that somehow still kept their helium. And as the nurses were kind of waving her goodbye at the desk, which is off to the left and outside the frame, uh, she kind of gave them a thumbs up. And I just, you know, was in the right place to be able to hit the shot. So um, awesome. she, you so know, that, wheeled herself was- outside. That was totally candid. Totally candid. Yeah, my mom, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a car outside. My mom was pushing her, uh, but then went to go get the car. And uh, that's when kind of the nurses were were cheering her on. And as she was pushing herself outside, uh, she gave everybody the thumbs up. So Mm -hmm. So I want to, I want to dig into sort of the deepest part of the the things the thing that we as photographers strive for which is to tell a story that really matters and i'm curious what do you what do you hope that this that the what do you what story do you hope you were able to tell with this mm, um, what, what do you hope people will see when they when they come across <laughs> these images i hope they see the importance of the relationship of family um, across generations and the strength of women in particular. Mm. Um, Certainly in my family, it seems like the women are the badasses and my grandmother kind of exemplifies that. (laughs) Still kicking butt at almost 94 years old. So, um, you know, I I titled the project Fall and Rise um, because I don't know, that's what happened. (laughs) So this, you know, I want people to be able to like garner strength from it and, you know, uh, be inspired by her story to overcome challenges in their own lives, I guess. Um, you kind of, you said something that reminded me of, uh, how the project also kind of came about because you asked about that earlier. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with Ted Forbes, who's a local Texan, uh, fellow Texan, uh, at the art of photography channel. Absolutely. So, so that's how I learned how to do um, film photography by watching some of his instructionals. And I don't know, maybe like six months or a year ago, he had done a short video on, I think he pro- call, called it something like, you know, shoot photos that matter. And he showed a book by some guy, I think in Eastern Europe that basically had taken pictures in his grandparents' house um, of, you know, things that were important to him. And so, I, I guess I was mindful of that and wanted to also make a project that mattered um, and that was an important family document. Um, and so hopefully that this that's what this is. That's, again, part of the reason why I shot in film because I want it to be a physical document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this book, I mean, is it, you've made a book about it, right? I did, yeah. You know, I, I used the photo book company, I guess. Um, it's called Pinhole Press, and they make these beautiful books that uh, have like cloth bindings and uh, a very high quality print job. And of course, you know, I paid for it myself. Hey, if somebody else wants to publish it at some point, that would be fantastic (laughs) too. But I I wanted a presentation piece to be able to give to my grandmother in celebration of that. So Mm -hmm. that's why I was quick off the mark with it. Excellent. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. Well, um, let's see. Anything else to see? Uh, where can they find you and where can they find your most recent works? Well, you can either swim to Houston in Hurricane Harvey's floodwaters. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I post uh, not as frequently these couple of weeks because I've been so tied up with the hurricane stuff. But I, I am on Tumblr and I'm also now begrudgingly on Instagram. Um, I think my Tumblr account is Fuji Fojo, as in like photojournalism with an F. Uh, and then my Instagram is Duke underscore Fojo, F-O-J-O. And actually, thanks to James Red, I got around finally to uh, making a website. Um, and I believe that's michaeldukephoto.com or something like oh, that. Oh, yay. Beautiful. Can you believe it? I is finally it, did it. Is it live yet? 
Uh, yes, it is actually. Oh. Um, although it needs to be kind of updated since when I first kind of set it up. But actually, the Fallen Rise project is on the site, so people can actually see the the full project there. Oh, beautiful, they, beautiful. If they if they care to do so. Beautiful. Did you use Squarespace? Or did you use I did, else? again, on, on your recommendation. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not even so. affiliated with Squarespace for anyone who's watching. I just love it. I've used it for years now. It's fantastic. Hey, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Uh, <laughs> Dang I'm it. Pretty... I need to be affiliated because this is great. I'm going to make some money off of this. Hey, seriously, I know some guys do. So Yeah, they just do it so well, man. You've got a good following, so you should uh, definitely be able to partner with them. I'm going to make some phone calls. Okay, Michael, thank you so much for your time here. Uh, this has been very lovely and and touching, honestly. Oh. I just I really enjoy I really enjoy the story that you were able to tell and the fact that you that you took the initiative to go and get the story, go make it happen. A lot of people want to do this. They have lots of ambitions and 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 would and in the back of their mind and in their hearts, they, they really one day want to do something that they feel good about, but, but you taking the initiative to create a story like this and um, not letting the challenges of whatever that would be overcome you is fantastic. Thanks, man. And again, I just appreciate you taking an interest in something that, you know, meant a lot to me. Uh, hopefully it will help spread the love. Absolutely. I've always loved storytelling, and you are a good storyteller. <laughs> Likewise. I, uh, a, a huge admirer of your, of your body of work, so thanks for letting me uh, participate in that. Well, likewise. Likewise. <laughs> we could go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you guys for watching. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.